This video is sponsored by Pixel Empire. If you're interested in decorating your room or office with some super cool gaming and movie themed posters and art, check the link in the description below and use code ROBOCAST for 10% off your order. The gaming industry has come a long way since its birth. It's crazy to think how video games have transitioned from two rectangles and a square bouncing across the screen to an industry worth nearly $100 billion. With so much money to be made, the stakes for game development are higher than they've ever been in the past, and bigger companies have been spending more and more money to create the next big thing. I mean, games like GTA V cost over $265 million to create, and many other games have followed this same trend. But with great risk comes great reward, and a majority of the games that have these insane budgets end up making even more than what was put into them, and it pays off in the end. And yes, that sounds good, but that's not always the case. Flashback to 2005. A company known as Real Time Worlds began thinking about a new project, and it was one that had potential to revolutionize online games and worlds. It sounded cool, I mean, the company that was working on this new project was founded by David Jones, the mastermind behind the very first Grand Theft Auto game, so it had to be a good game. This new project would be known as All Points Bulletin, referred to as APB. APB was planned to be something unlike anything ever seen at the time, and it had potential to be absolutely huge. In fact, it received nearly $100 million in funding, making it still one of the most expensive games ever developed. But as time went on, the game would fail, quite drastically, making it into a $100 million mistake that would ultimately result in the demise of the very company that made it. So what really happened here, and how could something with such a big budget and so much hype completely fail at delivering what it promised? We're going to be talking about the full story and more in today's video, Why APB Failed. Real Time Worlds was a company that was created by David Jones, who went on to make the first two GTA games and the original Crackdown game. He had great ideas, and his creations have had a lasting impact on what modern games have become. So, in 2005, when work had begun on a new title known as APB, expectations were very high. APB was going to basically be an MMO version of Grand Theft Auto, set in a huge open world with a constant battle going on between one side, known as the Enforcers, and the opposing side, known as the Criminals. The map was supposed to be huge, and character customization was unlike anything ever seen at the time. There were random robberies, gang wars, territory claims, notoriety levels, factions, and so much more that made everything feel real, and added a sense of life to the world. It would have been amazing, and if it was done properly, it could have been as big as GTA Online is today. APB was initially supposed to be a title that was planned for the Xbox 360, and it was going to put real-time worlds on the map as a game development company. A trailer was released in E3 at 2005, but it was a super low-key announcement that really didn't hold much excitement. I mean, it looked cool, and it was planned to release in 2007, but that was about it. Time went on, 2007 passed, and the game was pretty much forgotten about until 2008, when David Jones talked about it during the Game Developers Conference. The crazy thing was that Jones said that the game would be coming out in the same year, 2008. This is crazy in game development, and it very rarely happens, so it comes as no surprise to know that people were pretty excited. During this initial showcase of the game, Jones showed off a bunch of aspects that would make APB unique, and they were really cool concepts. He first showed off the depth of the character customization, demonstrating how you can change everything from how pronounced your character's veins are to placeable tattoos that had no limit as to where you can put them. People loved this, and it's still one of the best character customization systems that gaming has ever seen. He then talked about the main focus of the game and how there would be no levels. The concept on progression would be put into cosmetics, and your character would begin to look cooler as you played more. Finally, there would be a lot of user-created content that would be put into the game. Every character that was in the world would be user-created, and players could even import custom music onto the radio stations in-game. It was a game that was way ahead of its time, and after this conference, IGN made a first look blog and lots of gamers around the world would begin to follow the progress made on this game. The next update was made by developers in April of 2008, and it was an announcement stating that Real Time Worlds had raised over $50 million to go towards their projects, mainly meaning APB. For comparison, Real Time Worlds' first game, Crackdown, was only $20 million to develop so the initial funding for APB was already more than double the amount used to develop their previous game. And Crackdown had a Metacritic score of 83, which is really good. 
so everything was looking great for this new endeavor. As time went on, nothing else was really said, and it seemed like a delay was unavoidable. At E3 2009, another trailer was shown for the game, and the release date was moved back again to 2010. It appeared as if Real Time Worlds had been jumping around trying to find a publisher, and they actually managed to pick up EA, which was really good. But, in a press release given by EA, it was exposed that the game would no longer be coming to Xbox 360, and that it would be a PC exclusive. People question why Real Time Worlds never said anything about this, and why it only slipped up because of EA. But the developers doubled down on what they said, and told everyone once again that the game was going to be developed for the Xbox 360. At this point, more gameplay was released, and there were even some demos made by the developers. The hype around the release began to pick up, and it was confirmed to be coming out in 2010. It also stated that it would not be a subscription-based game like many other MMOs, but that the developers were not quite sure as to what they would be charging for the game yet. Then, another announcement was given, stating that the game would be a PC-only release. It seemed like the platform that it was being released on was jumping around like crazy, and every time someone would get excited about it coming to Xbox, it would be switched back to PC. It was definitely an irritating thing to some people, but the game was still looking promising. Late 2009 is when the real excitement happened, and the game announced an upcoming closed beta. Then, there was an open beta in the beginning of 2010, and everything was ready for launch. The game would be sold for $49.99, and then after 50 hours of gameplay, the player would have to pay an additional $7 per 20 hours of gameplay that was added to the game. Or, if the player wanted, they could buy a 30-day unlimited pass for around $10. Now, this was definitely a unique business model, and I don't think I've ever really seen anything quite like it. I know a lot of people didn't really agree with it, but since I don't really know my thoughts on it, I can't put my opinion in this video, because I pretty much don't have one. I do want to know what you guys think of this plan though, so please let me know in the comments below. The game officially launched on June 29th, 2010, and it didn't really go as planned. It ended up with a terrible score of 58 on Metacritic, and almost instantly, things were not looking very good. The total cost of development of this game was $100 million, which is a super hefty budget, and unless things turned around rather quickly, real-time worlds would have a huge problem on their hands. The game felt unfinished and rushed, it wasn't the best looking, and there were tons of glitches and bugs that appeared everywhere for players. Plus, there were some sketchy business practices that happened to real-time worlds. They placed a review embargo where nobody can put reviews out for the game until around after a week after the game launched. They stated that their reasoning behind it was that they wanted critics to experience the full game before posting a review, but it still sketched a lot of people out. During this time, there was a small window that the developers could have used to fix these launch day issues, but unfortunately, not much was done to deal with them. There were some patches and small updates that attempted to fix a few things here and there, but nothing drastic, and the game still lacked overall. Because of this, as time went on, the company began to struggle financially. And I mean, there was really no way to avoid it. The development of this game costed the same amount as the budget given to Flint, Michigan by the EPA for their water problem so an unsuccessful end product will obviously result in some financial losses. This continued, and on August 17th, 2010, Real Time Worlds was placed into administration, which is extremely similar to bankruptcy in the United States. They began to search for a buyer for the company in order to keep everything running. But while all of this was going on, the game did continue to run, and the company did operate as normal. The game was still playable, but the clock started ticking to see how quickly Real Time Worlds could solve this problem. Unfortunately, the situation didn't work out very well, and the studio ended up closing on the 16th of September 2010, just a few months after the launch of APB. As stated by a representative of the studio, APB had been a fantastic journey, but unfortunately that journey has to come to a premature end. Today we are sad to announce that despite everyone's best efforts to keep the service running, APB is coming to a close. It's been a pleasure working on APB and with all of its players. Together, we were building an absolutely amazing game, and for that, we thank you. You guys are awesome. And just like that, a project that had been going on for five years was officially over. The company closed down, and APB was put on a standstill. In September of 2010, other companies were looking at buying and taking over APB. The company that did end up purchasing it was known as Gamers First, and they planned for a remake and relaunch in 2011. These new developers planned on making the game a true free-to-play game with no pay-to-win aspects or stupid subscription plans. 
And the fans of the game were pretty excited for this. I mean, their hype had been up for APB for over five years, so it was about time that something good was going to come for the game. The revamped version, known as APB Reloaded, launched in December of 2011 on Steam. It looked much better than the previous game, and the free-to-play model would take away a lot of the complaints that existed before. When paying for a game, you have a lot higher of expectations than if you're playing it for free. If you pay for it, you want to get your money's worth, so usually the standards are set a lot higher. But since this was a free-to-play game, the standards were set a little bit lower, which did allow for a little bit more leniency in the game. This new version would last much longer, and would do much better than the original game, which was only public for around 79 days before it closed. And APB Reloaded is still around today, and while it's not necessarily a popular game, it's still surviving. But it's still not the game that people were expecting. The reviews are still mediocre, the path is drifting towards a pay-to-win system, and there are still tons of issues that keep it from becoming popular. Unfortunately, it will probably never become the game that was promised initially. And it may be rough around the edges, but at least it's still alive. There's no telling what the future will bring for APB Reloaded. I'm sure it'll still be around, and a small group of people will still play it, but it honestly sucks that it wasn't what everybody was expecting. I'm hoping that the current developers will take it and put some serious work into it, making it into something great. But like I said, there's really no way to know. One thing that I do know, however, is that Pixel Empire is a website that you should definitely check out. It's an up-and-coming website that sells really cool gaming-themed posters, phone cases, shirts, and a lot more. Their products are really nice, and I actually own some stuff by them, so I stand behind what they sell. I'm not just talking about something that I really don't know much about, because I actually love this company. Their newest products are some fictional travel-themed posters, and they would look really cool with most gaming setups. They're the sponsors of today's video, and they've hooked you guys up with a 10% off discount code if you're interested in purchasing anything. So if you go on the website, make sure to use code ROBOCAST at checkout, you'll get a nice discount and it'll help out the channel. Anyways guys, that is going to be it for today's video. What are your thoughts on the future of APB Reloaded, and do you think it could still become successful again? Let me know in the comments below, I look forward to seeing what you guys think. Anyways, I will see you guys next time, and peace.